Michael Page from Fargo Rate. It's August 2nd, 2018. This is just a little wrap-up of the 2018 BCAPL World Championship events, and in particular, a Fargo Rate analysis. I'd like to address three things. Starter ratings. How do players who played largely or completely according to a starter rating compare to the rest of the crowd? Geographic differences. How do players from different parts of the country compare? Uh, and also, I'll make a few comments about LMS, Fargo Rate LMS, our league management software. There were lots of singles events, but I'll focus on the mixed platinum, gold, silver, and bronze and the women's platinum, gold, silver, and bronze eight ball events. That's 1,100 players, which is a good number for statistics, but it's also an impressive number for CSI, who prohibited this year players who don't play league but just paid a little extra money to get in. There are three categories of players when it comes to Fargo ratings. The first is players with 200 or more games. We say they have a Fargo rating, otherwise known as an established Fargo rating. Other players have no games at all in the system, but they may be allowed to play according to a guess that we call a starter rating. The third category is people who have some games, but fewer than 200. They essentially have two rating numbers. One is a performance rating that's not very reliable because it's not based on enough games. The second is a starter guess that's not very reliable for different reasons. What they play by is a weighted blend of those two numbers. This last group can also be divvied into two, those whose preliminary rating is based more upon performance than upon a starter guess, and those whose preliminary rating is based more upon a starter guess than it is performance. It's about whether they have more or less than 100 games in the system. This is the distribution of the 1,100 players. The first thing you notice is that more than half of the players have an established Fargo rating, have more than 200 games in the system. This is a, a really big deal, and we're proud of this. It's a testimony to the fact that we've gone in a couple of years from 1 million games in the system to over 8 million games in the system, and we're almost the largest database of any interactive sport right now. We think we will be by the end of the year. But what it also means is that when you face an opponent the first round, there's a greater than even chance that that opponent will have established Fargo rating. Only 6% of the players now play by a starter guess only, and there's about an even distribution between players with fewer than 100 games and between 100 and 200 games. For the analysis that follows, we make those four groups into two, those whose rating is based more upon performance than a guess and those whose rating is based more upon a guess than performance. Before diving into the data, let's think for a minute about what car insurance companies do. The pie chart on the left represents all drivers and the red piece of pie is the fraction of those drivers that are, say, iPhone owners. The pie chart on the right represents all car accidents, and the piece of pie represents all iPhone users that got into car accidents. If those two pieces of pie look similar, the insurance company doesn't charge extra for insurance for iPhone owners. But when that insurance company does the same thing for single males under 25, things look quite different and rates are determined accordingly. Here's the comparable analysis for us. On the left, is a pie chart showing all players, showing in red the players whose rating is based completely or predominantly on performance, and in blue the players whose rating is based completely or predominantly on a guess. These two pie charts looking the same is really good news. So while the rest of the analysis is interesting, the big picture already is that things look about right. That comparison was about the number of players finishing in the money, irrespective of where they finished, but of course the prize money is very top-heavy. What if we look at the distribution of money amongst these two groups as well? It looks like this. It's that now familiar picture of nearly three-quarters uh, related to the performance crowd and a little bit more than a quarter related to the guest crowd. What about geography? 29% of the entire field got paid, and if things are working correctly, if the ratings mean the same thing in different parts of the country, we might expect approximately 29% of the entrants from any particular area to have finished in the money. We'll start with North Dakota, 11 entrants. That's where Steve and I come from. If 29% of us cash, that'd be about three, and the actual is one. Does that mean there's a problem with our ratings? No, we just had a, a poor showing. Uh, in fact, Steve and I contributed to the 10 who didn't cash. As the numbers get bigger, the comparisons get more meaningful. California had 240 uh, entrants in these events, so 70 
uh, are expected to cash. That's 29%. And actually, it was 65. That's pretty close, within 10%. Texas, 109 entrants, 32 expected to cash statistically, and actually it was 30. Washington had 49 entrants, and therefore about 14 expected to cash, and actually 14 cashed. Arizona, 48 entrants, 14 expected to cash, actual was 16. Those are the four states with the most entrants. If we look at other states, we sort of need to group them together to get big enough numbers. If we go from Virginia down to Florida along the Atlantic East Coast, there were 90 entrants, 26 expected to cash, 27 actually. Delaware up to Maine, pretty underrepresented area, but amongst the 65 entrants with 19 expected to cash, 18 actually cashed. Does this work out for every place? Well, pretty much. There is an exception, though. Canada, and largely Alberta is the culprit here, uh, seem to cash at an unusually high rate. We don't think it's a rating issue. We think it's a starter rating issue and who's chosen to make the trip. Um, but this is something that we'll look into. Let's go back to the initial distribution of people amongst the different categories. Remember, this is 1,100 players here. Some people think that CSI should require that players have an established Fargo rating or should require that players without an established Fargo rating play by some high play to rating. We think this is a bad idea. Remember, there's about 500 people here that don't have established Fargo ratings. And it's not that these people are avoiding Fargo ratings or hiding in the weeds or something like that. The usual situation is that these people are in places that have not been able to get games into the system and maybe don't even know much about Fargo ratings. Um, and these people may be people who have been playing BCA Pool League for years and coming to Vegas for years. There's a big step forward now in that we are releasing Fargo Rate LMS League Management System so that many of these divisions that previously have not been able to get games in will be able to get games in now. There's a wide range of formats that LMS can, can handle. Uh, you can play 8-ball, 9-ball, 10-ball. You can uh, score it by the game, by the round, 10-point, 17-point scoring. You can handicap it or not. Uh, you can have three-player teams, five-player teams. It doesn't matter. There's a wide range of things that, that you can do in LMS and still get games into Fargo Rate. The Fargo Rate database now exceeds 8 million games, and we expect this to grow faster now as LMS is widely available. Once again, uh, Michael Page with Fargo Rate. Thanks for listening.